Hello, and welcome to How to Get Started in IT. I'm Cherokee Boos, and today we're gonna to be talking about seven habits of highly effective techies. Okay, so I wanna share with you my seven habits of highly effective techies. And of course, if you're already in tech, you may have already realized that you've committed to becoming a lifelong learner, which brings us to number one, learn how to learn. This is probably the most important advice I can give to anyone in tech, because we know this landscape is always changing and you can't remain stagnant. And for me, it wasn't until I was a full grown adult with a child of my own before I really understood what worked for me. And this can be difficult at times. If you're struggling with this, check out my video where I explain how to study for a certification exam and then see if those tips help you. Let me know. Number two, stay in the know. Engage with peers, and yes, I mean step away from the keyboard. Get out there, go attend working groups, meetups, or really anywhere that facilitates dialogue and interaction. Conferences are another great way to meet a lot of people. Last year, I attended my real first conference at Microsoft Ignite and walked away with information overload and met some top contenders respective to their fields. I also try to stay engaged with the people I meet to see if there's anything that I can do to help them. And social media is a great way to do that. If you see someone putting forth the effort and crafting maybe a how-to blog or tutorial, then share it. I mean, I see it as that's the least that I could do to help spread the word and strengthen the tech community. Number three, validate your knowledge. Obtain new certifications, not only for external validation, but sometimes just to prove it to yourself. After successfully passing an exam, I definitely get a wave of pride and accomplishment, and that can often provide enough motivation momentum to help me achieve other goals. And depending on your career maturity, other accomplishments may start to take place of certification, such as receiving awards or other milestones to build your reputation, uh, like seeking experiences to enrich your resume. And a couple of ways you could do that would be by writing blogs, articles, or giving presentations, or you know, become a champion for some diverse projects at worst. And maybe that means even uh, establishing a diverse customer base. So step up and volunteer for that big project at work. And if you're currently not employed, or maybe your employment situation doesn't offer those opportunities, make them yourself by reaching out in your community. I guarantee you, someone, somewhere is wishing they had extra help. Number four, teach others. Nurture a community of growth and use your powers for good. Give back, share your knowledge and experiences. You just may be surprised at some of the lessons that you'll learn by explaining to others. When you have to break something down and teach someone, they may ask you questions that you've never thought of before. And fresh perspective is, well, refreshing. If you don't have someone to teach in person, forums are great for this. And I know that I've answered forum questions that made me do a little extra digging. Number five, maintain a healthy work-life balance. This is a something that a lot of us tend to neglect at times, myself included. So find healthy ways to deal with stress, establish personal and work boundaries. And if you're not sure how to do that, check out my work-life balance video right here on YouTube. Number six, set challenging goals and meet them. You may have heard the quote, the saying, a goal without a deadline is just a dream. And this is very true. So set small attainable goals and realize that you may not make every goal and that's okay. If you ask any successful person if they failed, their answer will be yes. Failure will happen. And when it does, learn from it and move forward. Number seven, learn to say no. And this could mean a couple of different things. It can be used in the context to help establish a work-life boundary, um, really on both sides. So for me, depending on my workflow and goals, it could mean not going to that music concert so I could finish a demonstration. Or perhaps letting work know that I won't be able to stay late and work on this project so I can make it to my daughter's dance recital. But this could also mean admitting when you don't have the answer. Personally, I don't care for people trying to BS their way through something. And I would have much more respect for someone if they just said, you know, no, I don't know how to configure a Cisco switch. And that way I can point them into the right direction to give them any kind of available resources that will help them get the job done correctly without wasting time. Okay, so those were my seven habits of highly effective techies. Let me know what your tips and tricks are. Drop them in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, I'm Cherokee Boost.